as you know, using Ajax you can download text or XML from the server and those are really the only two types of data formats you can download. It's a little bit restrictive and you might wonder, well, what about downloading other things such as JavaScript objects and so forth, if you're familiar with how objects work in JavaScript. And there is a sort of way that you can download a JavaScript object from the server using Ajax. And you'll see this occasionally in Ajax applications, which means we should cover it here. Here's how it works. You can Here's the text-based method of downloading a JavaScript object. It does, it's not really a JavaScript object. You'll see how, how what I mean in a second. Say, for example, you were able to download this text from the server. You set the various properties. Method, set to adder, operand 1, set to value 4, operand 2, set to value 3, and everything is enclosed inside curly braces like this. That's the text, let's say, that you've downloaded from the server. Then you create a new variable, for example, named JavaScript object. You evaluate, remember, val executes the JavaScript code, enclosed inside parentheses, JavaScript object equals, and then you add, you append to that using the plus JavaScript operator, the text that was downloaded from the server. That creates a new JavaScript object whose properties corresponds to the text that you have associated with the various property names here inside that the text you downloaded from the server. So you can say javascript.method. Now you're going to evaluate javascript.method. That's adder. Okay, so that means evaluate adder, and then you add to that, you append to that text parentheses, and then javascript object.operand1. That's going to be 4. It's going to be a value of four. It's going to be a string of four. It's going to be placed there. That's a comma. Plus JavaScript object dot operand two. Operand two holds a value of three. And then close parentheses. And that ends the eval statement. So the, you're, what you're doing is you're evaluating adder parentheses operand one, which is four, comma, operand two, which is three end parentheses. So that's as close as you can get to downloading a JavaScript object. You can download properties like this as associated with various values. So you're now evaluating adder of 4, comma 3. So in other words, you've downloaded JavaScript text or text, straight text, and you have converted it to a JavaScript object with various properties. And then you evaluate adder of 4, comma 3. And you have to have a function named adder in order to be able to execute that, that call. So you have adder, operand 1, operand 2, and the you add those two together like this. And you get a sum in this function, this adder function that's being called by this eval statement. And then we're going to display the results op1, which is 4, plus op2, which is 3, equals sum. So we should see, when you start this page, you should see 4 plus 3 equals 7. Again, the way this works is by using this text, which could have been downloaded from a server very easily, to specify the properties of a JavaScript object. You then create a JavaScript object like this, and you then can use various properties inside it to recover the data from it. So it's as close as you can get to downloading an actual JavaScript object. Let's take a look at the actual page in at work. Here you are. And there you see 4 plus 3 equals 7. So works as it should. And that's as close as you can get to downloading JavaScript objects. You can download the text version of a JavaScript object like this. Then you can use the properties of the, after converting that text to a JavaScript object, you can use the properties of that object to recover the data inside from the, inside the string, the text string downloaded from the server. So you'll occasionally see that kind of work used in Ajax, and so it's a fit topic for us to cover here as well. It's not the most convenient way of doing things, but it does help you partially circumvent the restrictions on working with 
just anything besides straight text and XML as downloaded from the server. We're also going to see soon how you can use dynamic HTML to make it look as though Ajax is downloading binary files and, and image files from the server as well. That's going to come up fairly soon in the course.